in this video, we're going to show you how to get sync things set up on SureNAS Scale 24.04, which is the most current version as of this release. I know there's some application changes coming in 24.10. This should still work, but if it doesn't, well, I'll just have to make a new video. If you're not familiar with SyncThing, I already made a more in-depth video covering all the details about SyncThing. This video is just going to cover how to set up SyncThing on SureNAS, how to get the permissions properly configured, and if you want to add a share to it, how that would work as well. So let's get started. This is SureNAS Scale Dragonfish 24.04.2. And the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a spot to store our sync thing data. So we're going to go here to data sets. We're going to click on the pool that I'm going to put it in. You can put it in a nested data set if you want. We're just going to create it right in the root here. We want to add the data set and we want to say sync thing demo. And the type of data set preset we want to choose is apps. Even if you're going to add a share or not add a share, still choose apps because this will set all the permissions exactly as they need to be. We're going to hit save. And now we have our sync thing demo folder. If you wanted to have more granular control, you can add data sets and nest them underneath and give the folders the same name. That is perfectly fine because this will give you the advantage of having extra snapshots you could apply on a per data set basis. Goes beyond the scope of this, but yes, that will work. That is something you can do. And yes, you would set the permissions for each nested data set to be exactly the same. For simplicity, we're just going to call this one sync thing demo, and that's where we're going to store everything. Now, the next step we want to go through here is going to the applications. They're already set up. They've already been chosen to a pool. They're already set up on the demo pool, but I have no applications loaded. So we're going to go to discover apps and we're going to find sync thing, which happens to be right here. Go ahead and click the install. Change the name if you want. I'm just going to leave it at sync things. That seems fine. One thing I like to change though, is not the web port where you have the admin controls, but the TCP port, and I'll change the UDP port to be the same. The reason I change these to the default setting is just because all the other sync thing instances I have are at the same port number, and there's not anything else loaded right now that's conflicting with it. If there was a conflict with another app or service you have, then you would have to choose a different port. Then we're going to go down here, choose our storage type, and we're going to choose host path. We're going to go down here to mount, demo pool, sync thing demo. We don't really need to do anything else. All the other configuration can say exactly as it is. And we'll just go ahead and hit install. All right, now the system's up and running. We can go to the web portal. And of course, this can ask if you want to participate in anonymous usage. I'm going to say yes, but that is a personal choice you can make. It does give you the warning here that the interface does not have a password on it. We're going to go ahead and fix those things. So we're going to go in settings. I'll give this device name sync thing true NAS demo. We'll go over here to the GUI. We'll go ahead and put a password on there so it doesn't complain. Now, do not change this, and it does warn you that this was overridden anyways. So if you change this, it's going to ignore it, but don't mess with that. There's not a need to. And as I noted, my other sync thing video is up to you if you want to leave these on or off the global discovery, NAT traversal, and local relaying and discovery. These are options that I cover in my other video. It's a beaconing system that allows it ease of use of finding other sync thing servers. I'm not going to use that. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. It allows me to log back in. I'm going to delete the default folder because I don't have a use for it. So we're going to go ahead and hit remove, say yes. And since I don't have any data on this, we're going to switch over to a system that I do have data on and share it back with this system here. So this is running locally on my system. And at the top here, you can see it says pop OS. And this one says sync thing demo. First step is go to show ID. We're going to copy the ID and we want to add a remote device here, paste in the ID, go to advanced and specify the IP address and port number. This is the IP address of my TrueNAS system and port 22000 was the overridden port from the default that I put in there, which is actually the default port for sync thing. So we'll go ahead and save this. Then we're going to get confirmation to add the device here. We'll go ahead and hit save. So now the two devices are connected. Now we're back over on my pop os system and we're going to go and share it with that true nas demo so go here to sharing there's our true nas demo hit save there's a couple files in here this is receiving the share so we're going to go ahead and add it now when you accept the share you can leave the folder base path the same that's because the folder base path is the path that we specified inside of the settings when we set the app up so we're going to go ahead and hit save here and we see that it's up to date. Now let's talk about the sharing. 
And for that, we want to go to shares and we want to add a window share. And if we look here, we see mount, demo pool, sync thing demo, and there's that demo folder. You can share out the folder or you can share out the sync thing demo. But if you share out sync thing demo, all shares will be visible. Maybe you only want this share visible. So we're going to keep it simple and just do this share right here. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. Go ahead and restart the service. And right here, we can see that share for demo. So we'll go ahead and double click on it. And I've already logged in. And here's the files that are in there. If we wanted to add another file, that's not a problem. Let me pull up something out of another directory. We'll grab a bunch of these screenshots that I have right here. We'll paste them into here. And then we can look in the sync thing. And now you see it found 93 more files. It's up to date. And the demo folder here now also has those 93 files in it. So it's syncing properly on the system. Matter of fact, demo syncs locally here. If we go to my home, we look at demo. And if we change things on here, like I don't really need that in there. So we'll go ahead and hit delete. It's now deleted out of there and it will resynchronize. And you'll see the file count change here. We can force it to do a rescan. And there we go. It's now back down 23 files in here. This is on the Pop! OS system, and we can look on this system, and we can see it also only has three files. So you can see the synchronization is working both in SyncThing and in the different share that I have on there. Now, the host path we specified was a data set we created called SyncThing Demo. As noted, you could create several more underneath of it, but that does require they exist prior to you doing the share. For example, the folder we created called demo, created that folder called demo underneath there. But if you want to create a data set called demo, you have to do it prior to having shared and accepted and pointed at that particular directory. So nesting them under there is no problem, but just note that it takes a little bit of planning if you plan to have a whole series of shares and you want each share in its own data set, or you can do as I did in this video for simplicity, just have them all under the one data set. When you back up that data set, if you use something like snapshots plus ZFS replication, all of the configuration settings are in there as well. So you have your data, which is in those folders, but there's also a config directory that has a config.xml file for all the settings and all the different systems that that sync thing is attached to. So all of that is in there. So that way, if you ever had the TrueNAS system completely fail on you, suffer catastrophic failure where the application has to be reloaded, you simply point it back at the host path and sync thing will go, Hey, there's a config.xml file. I will use that one instead of creating a new one because it does check if one exists when you set it up. If it finds an existing one, all the settings come back and anything you'd customized and all your different settings such as versioning will all be set up just the same. So it's pretty easy to back up and restore. Do watch my video if you're not familiar with how TrueNAS replication works. You'll find that link down in the TrueNAS playlist down below. Leave your thoughts and comments. Love hearing back from all of you. Also, head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion on this or other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel and head over to lawrencesystems.com. Sign up for the newsletter if you want to keep up with the monthly goings on at Lawrence Systems and the videos and different news articles that I put in there. All right, and thanks.